Hello there, my fellow fans of the Warhammer Fantasy Universe, and welcome back. Welcome back to our so-called Minor Nations series of lore, where we talk about some of the smaller factions of this great fantasy setting. Now, for no less than four videos now, I have been talking about Tylea and most of the famous regiments of renown. Today, though, I wanted to change things up a bit and talk about something else. So, I set my eyes upon another Warhammer faction that is fairly prevalent in many of their stories. There is also the added benefit of not having ever talked about this faction before. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the infamous lands of the Border Princes. There isn't a lot of lore about this place, so today I'm gonna be giving an overview and tell you a bit of everything regarding the region. I am your host, the Border Prince narrator for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Border Prince Confederacy, known also as the Borderlands, the Frontiers, or simply the Border Princes, is a pretty vast region within the Old World, located between the Black Mountains and Blackfire Pass to the north, and the shores of the Black Gulf to the south. This region of vast wilderness is home to a multitude of petty human kingdoms that were established by highly ambitious adventurers who were trying to carve out a realm of their own. Many times, however, these adventurers consisted of political or religious refugees from other lands, including the Empire, Bretonia, Tylea, or Kislev. As such, these lands are infamous as the home of a wide variety of bandits, mercenaries, cutthroats, pirates, and other less savory characters. Following the Battle of Blackfire Pass, human colonists and adventurers during the times of Sigismund the Conqueror led a campaign of conquest towards the Empire's southern borders, and fought off the greenskin tribes that used to inhabit these lands. Thus, they cleared the way for many nobles and colonists from all across the lands of the Old World, to colonize and claim patches of this territory as their own. The lands which are now today the Border Princes have always been a rugged and uncivilized wilderness since ages past. It is said that the Nehekarans built settlements within these frontiers during the time of Setra the Great, when that guy went into an all-conquering spree to take the Old World as his new domain. After the fall of Nehekara, the border princes now served as the location from which multiple human tribes have migrated in order to escape the turmoil all the way in the east. Some settled within the land itself, while many ventured through Blackfire Pass. In former times, the border princes were largely inhabited by savage tribes of greenskins. But now, the land is fiercely disputed by hardy human colonists and many orc and goblin tribes. Following the Battle of Blackfire Pass, Emperor Sigismund the Conqueror promptly invaded these lands and eradicated what remained of the greenskin threat, eventually forming the province of Lichtenberg in the process. Yet, following the fall of Lichtenberg centuries later, the lands would eventually become the frontiers from which new lands and new kingdoms shall form from the desperate, the corrupt, or just the plain adventurous. Centuries after Lichtenberg's destruction, Bretonia would send a massive army of knights errant to assist the forces of King Louis during the Arabian Crusades, led by Baron Tybalt Dubois de Balzac. This army had to stop to fight many enemies over their journey, becoming slow in the face of the heavy opposition. It took them almost a year to reach the vicinity of the dwarf stronghold of Barak Var. Here, the Bretonians received word that Louis had defeated the forces of Sultan Jafar in a decisive victory at Al Haik, and the war was over. Deeply saddened that they could not experience the riches and glories of the crusade, the army of the young knights prepared for a long trek home. The ingenious Baron Tybalt pointed out to his army that they were already upon the threshold of a new land to be conquered. There was honor and riches to be had by carving out domains for themselves in this new land. All that needed to be done was vanquish the orcs and the goblins. After such long hardships, this was exactly what the knights wanted to hear, and they set about the task with impetuous enthusiasm. They drove the greenskins into the blood river and butchered them, and set about building great castles to hold back any future attacks. Thus, the region that has become known as the Domains of the Border Princes came into existence. 
and the ancestors of many actual border princes that rule there to this very day were among those knights following Tybalt. The regional rulers which have staked a claim within these lands are known collectively as the Border Princes, hence where the land gets its name. Each prince would rule a small realm which would have the prestigious and over-exaggerated title of Principality, yet these are usually realms that would barely qualify as even a knight's fief in a more civilized land. Most of these princes do have a court a group of hangers-on who help the prince to run the principality in return for rewards, or until they have enough clout to murder him and take over. The size of the court does increase with the size of the principality, but the relationship is rather weak. It is much more dependent on the personality of the prince than anything else. A large court tends to indicate a weak prince who feels the need for a lot of support. A very small or non-existent court also tends to indicate weakness, in that the prince feels no one else should have real power. Large and small courts both are very common in the border princes. Some of these princes insist on referring to their dealings with other princes as international diplomacy, but most of these guys have an inflated view of their own importance. The more realistic ones talk about local relations when dealing with other princes, and reserve words like international for dealing with proper nations, such as Bretonia or the Empire. Everyone recognizes that the most significant relations are those with the other princes, as the major nations of the old world do not regard these petty states as anything important. Since even a mayor of a large imperial city has power over more people than some of these princes, you can see their point. Still, politics in the border princes are vicious, precisely because the stakes are so small. A prince who loses the principality might be able to get a new one, just as good, after a couple of lucky battles or one lucky assassination. Thus, there are a lot of princes thinking that it is worth risking everything to grab a little bit more power or a bit more security. Cautious stalemates or watchful pieces are very rare in the area, and this can make life exciting, but deeply unstable. The overwhelming majority of the communities in the border princes are small. Outside the principalities, there are no communities bigger than a hamlet, and the largest of settlements of the region would only count as a small town in the empire. While the border princes are rarely models of good government, they do, on the whole, provide some security to their subjects. They are, in short, better than nothing. Hence, most of the people living in the region live in one of these principalities, and this is where the only large settlements can be found. Most of the principalities do contain a large number of villages. Outside the boundaries of these petty fiefdoms, there are no towns between each individual principality. There aren't many villages either, but there are quite a lot of homesteads. Homesteads often dot many regions in the border princes, and are usually home to just a couple of families of farmers. Communities in the border princes have many features in common with communities elsewhere. Homes of varying quality, a temple or a shrine to the locally favored god, a marketplace, a mill, and so on. One feature setting apart the communities of this region is the level of fortification. There is no such thing as an undefended community, and all the villages have at least one earth and wood rampart with a gate that is guarded at all times. Within the fortifications, homes are generally built to be defensible. It is common for the entrance to be on the first floor, for example, and for the ground floor to have solid stone walls or thick earth ramparts with no opening. There are, of course, other equally dangerous regions in the old world, if not even more so. However, in regards to defensible settlements, the borderlands are more extensive than most. The borderlands are full of perils. War, plague, famine, these can kill many of the inhabitants long before they die of old age. The inhabitants of the region rarely worry about these threats, however. They are far too busy worrying about the monsters instead. Some scholars have speculated that the borderlands have no more monsters than any other region of the old world, but that the absence of government makes them bolder and also makes them seem more numerous. Scholars that have actually visited the border princes know that this is ridiculous. 
the inhabitants of more civilized areas might think that their actions have no effect on the number of foul creatures plaguing them, but these scholars know better. Without any organized hunts, monsters in the borderlands are far more numerous, and far bolder than almost anywhere else. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the lands of the border princes for today. It is definitely an area filled with adventure and danger in equal measure. Now, are you a fan of this Warhammer Fantasy Minor faction? Do you know of any other interesting aspects of this land? Do share your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. In case you want to experience them a little bit more though, the series of novels called Brunner the Bounty Hunter actually takes place predominantly in the Border Princess. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. May Sigmar's blessings be upon you.